now it's time for RTV 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very common evidence that's often put forth for biological evolution is my colleague, Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome, Fuzz. Krista, hi, how are you? We're doing well. We're staying well here during the quarantine. We're very grateful for the technology so that the show can go on. Um, I want to talk today about this issue of the evolution of whales, because if anyone picks up a high school biology textbook, there might be some parents watching today and they might look in their students' high school biology textbook. They're going to find a section about whale evolution. And so I thought maybe we could help make sense of this for our viewers. And so maybe you can first start off and describe what people are going to see in their textbooks about whale evolution. Yeah, well, um, the, the claim that you see on the part of evolutionary biologists is that whales evolved as mammals from land-based mammals. And oftentimes there's a creature called Pachycetus, which is a wolf-like creature that is envisioned as living near the water's edge that gave rise to a lineage that culminates in the emergence of modern whales, where each of these members in that lineage uh, develop over time an elongated body where their, their limbs become shorter and shorter and eventually evolve into whales and their tails eventually develop into a flipper-like structure. And presumably you have fossils in the, the, uh, the geological record that document this evolutionary transition so that you have this very impressive sequence of transitional forms that are, again, documenting this, this evolutionary transition at the water's edge from land into the oceans. So help us understand why this is seen as such a powerful uh, evidence that it is almost universally put into high school biology textbooks. How does it show evolution from the evolutionary point of view? Well, I mean, one of the key predictions of the evolutionary paradigm is that there should be evidence in the fossil record for evolutionary transformations. And yet when you look at the fossil record, you really see a dearth of evidence that seemingly documents these kinds of evolutionary transformations. It's not to say that they're not these fossils that are uh, interpreted as transitional forms, but the actual series of uh, transitions is usually inferred from a very sparse fossil record. And so what we see with the whale series is what appears to be this incredibly beautifully documented series of transitional forms documenting a key evolutionary transformation. And because of its unusual, of its unusual nature, because of, of the, the quality of the fossils, people will point to this as a quintessential example of evolution being documented in the fossil record, but it's not uh, typical. It is a rare example, and that's why it shows up in, in biology textbooks. That's very helpful. Now, we at Reasons to Believe, I like to say that we're kind of skeptics that natural process evolution can adequately account for the history of life. I'm wondering what potential uh, problems do you see with this kind of wolf-like creature evolving into a whale uh, creature? What are some potential issues that you have with that? Yeah, well... Um... I would agree that on the surface, this seems to be a very impressive example of evolution being documented in the fossil record. But when you begin to press on some of the details, I think you, you see um, aspects of this quote unquote evolutionary transformation that, are, that raise some, some uh, questions. For example, this transition presumably happens in a time scale of less than 10 million years, where Pachycetus is in existence about uh, 55 million years ago, and the transition is complete by 45 million years ago. So within a window of time of less than 10 million years, you have a wolf-like creature that lives on the land undergoing a complete uh, reworking of its anatomy and physiology to be adapted to live in the open oceans. It's hard to envision how that kind of evolutionary transformation could happen that quickly 
when we see other quote unquote transitions in the fossil record, like the, the horse series, where you go from a small horse that's about the size of a dog to horses as they are now, we, as we now know them today, much larger, where there is a restructuring of the foot and a restructuring of the dentition. This is a relatively minor change that takes about 60 million years to transpire. Hard to imagine how that could happen in 10 million years. Uh, and, and then on top of that, there's a lot of uncertainty about the precise evolutionary pathway and evolutionary relationships. For example, there are some people who claim it wasn't Pachycetus that was the creature that inaugurated this evolutionary series, but other uh, fossils have been attributed as being the, the whale ancestor, like a deer-like creature or a raccoon-like creature. Uh, or if you go to uh, the anatomical uh, features and build evolutionary trees that way, or the genetic features and build evolutionary trees that way, you get very different evolutionary trees, whether it's using genetic data or using anatomical data. So the bottom line is that, uh, that while superficially this transition looks pretty impressive from the fossil record, the details really raise questions about, is this the best explanation for whale origins? So when we're looking at this same evidence from an old earth creation model perspective, I'm wondering how do we look at it? How do we see it? How do we interpret this same data? Well, we would say that these uh, fossils are describing real organisms that existed, many of them at the water's edge, that based on the fossils that we've discovered, they seem to be perf perfectly and ideally adapted to live and to thrive at the water's edge. So we would see them as the product of a designer. Now, these so-called transitional forms actually co-occur in the fossil record. They are not uh, appearing uh, sequentially in the fossil record, but they all show up at the same time. And so this idea of a sequence is really a, an interpretation that's imposed on the fossil record, not an interpretation that flows out of the fossil record. But evolutionary biologists will also say, well, these creatures have a mosaic of properties that they interpret to be transitional in nature. But you could also see those mosaic properties as, again, reflecting the work of a designer. So uh, to me, I think you could easily interpret the fossil record and specifically the whale, these whale fossils as being fully compatible with an old earth creationist position. They don't demand an evolutionary interpretation. Well, thanks, Fuzz, for helping us out today. And I do want to invite our viewers to go check out Fuzz's blog. It's called The Cells Design, and it is at reasons.org.